Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week I'm joined by Sai and we're also going to be discussing two new 12B group sets, a new BMC bike developed alongside Red Bull, Zwift News and we have a very own new website. Yes, we are also going to be talking though about why the UCI are actually right for once and Ollie and Alex are wrong. <laughs> I feel like I've come at a great time. You have. You're going to enjoy this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this week for our main talking point, we're actually discussing why the UCI right and Ollie and I are actually wrong. Now, the reason I wanted to get talking about this, because here in the UK, we've just had the 10 mile time trial championships, and then Ollie sent me this picture of Rich Bossel, who finished second place, and it absolutely triggered me, to be honest. Yes. I'm not happy about it. We've got fairings underneath his skin suit behind his biceps, a big chest fairing, and even fairings underneath his long aero socks. So you mean he's not actually that muscly in real life? He's not actually, he hasn't got huge biceps. Oh, no way. And um, oh. I just, I'm just not happy about it, basically. Yeah. It's the chest fairing that you will need to do a double take on, because uh, <laughs> like, initially I didn't notice that, and then I'm like, good Lord, that is bonkers. Um, but it's got to be said, hasn't it, that at the British Time Trial 10 Mile Championships, that is completely legal, because the Quite literally, the UCI has no jurisdiction there. Um, it's run under cycling time trials rules. Uh, cycling time trials being a fairly niche British yeah. organisation that run time trials in this country. <laughs> um, and they have some slightly quirky rules um, and are very relaxed about other things. So, for example, you have to have a front and a rear light. Like even in daytime? Even in daytime, mainly because most of their courses are ridiculously dangerous. That's actually, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, but you're, they're quite happy for you to look like Robocop, or even, God forbid, an Iron Man when yeah. you're riding around. It's starting to look a bit weird, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, but it's not just Rich Bustle that was at it. The winner, Josh Charlton, also had a big chest fairing, and as did Alex Dowsett. As in for, former World Tour rider Alex Dowsett has yes. stooped to get a chest, <laughs> yeah, whatever, fairing. Chest fairing. But hear me out, right? So Dowsett finished in third place, just three seconds behind Rich Bustle. But Dowsett didn't have the ginormous biceps or the ginormous calf fairings. So whilst I don't know this for fact, I feel fairly confident in saying those fairings helped Rich Bustle gain three seconds to therefore beat Dowsett. What's Dowsett doing? Honestly, the guy the guy's won stages of the Giro and now he's like not training but putting on chest Fairings. fairings instead. And as, a, as much as it breaks my heart, I also say he had water bottles behind his saddle, you know, like a triathlete would have. Did he? He did, yeah. Oh, my God. What have things come to? Yeah. I was just not happy about it, basically. Mm. So what ultimately you're saying here, then, is that if you leave people to their own devices, like Alex Dowsett now, <laughs> not governed by UCI rules, they'll basically go too far and do stuff that you don't like. Yes, it's that simple. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, <laughs> so is that not the whole point? So effectively, the UCI are doing the job that you're effectively now wanting to do, which is to stop people doing stuff that compromises yeah. the integrity of the sport, yeah. makes people look like total dorks. I am having to sort of backtrack slightly on some of the stuff I've said in the past, but I have also said it's about finding that balance. For me, I want to see tech progress. That's the stuff that I love. I want to see it pushed, boundaries pushed, but aero fairings, no. Not Every, underneath skin suits. Everyone's got their limit. Yeah. You found yours. It's just the UCI limit doesn't necessarily always tally up. I think the UCI right. could take a bit of a chill pill now and again, but maybe not. I, I don't want aero fairings. So I think the UCI needed to take a chill pill in 1997 at the Lugano <laughs> Charter. I think they went too far, right? But now I think they've got it about right because... We don't want to see Robocop, like, with an aero chest fairing. And, but also, like, the reason some of their rules are in place is to try and stop this, like, tech arms race. It's to try yeah. and stop countries like GB or Denmark spending millions people with big of resource. pounds. Yeah, and then yeah. meaning that people from countries where they haven't got the same resource literally can't compete. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm all for it. So the UCI right. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. That, I said at the start of the show, you see, I'm right, we're wrong for once. And all it's taken is bicep fairings and a chest fairing. Who you. knew? Who knew that was what it was going to take? Um, yeah, you're right. Everyone's got their limits. It's not just about what we feel our limits are. I want to hear from you guys at home as well. But for me, 
Bicep fairings, chest fairings, calf fairings, it's a no. Crazy long aero socks, it's a no. Normal length, it's a yes from me. Aero helmets on the road are okay. Space suit helmets, it's a no from me. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on the road, I'm glad the UCI have banned like stupid time trial bar, uh, stupid time trial, stupid drop handle bars. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I think like people look a bit dorky and I think that's important so that people can, <laughs> like casual viewers of the Tour de France can switch on in July and be like, oh yeah, there you go, they look oh, like normal looks guys. Looks like a cyclist. As opposed to just like <laughs> riding around like that. So I think, I think that's an important criteria for the UCI yeah. to make it approachable to the common person, yeah. you see what I mean? Not just dorks like us. Um, but, um, but yeah, I suppose it, for me, I think road's kind of right, time trial's right. It, it's, great, it's gravel, the great, uh, oh, the, the great like unruled mass of gravel where I'm sort of thinking like, the odd rule might be kind of cool, like banning yeah. if TT bars so they don't look like I love stupid, how we've managed to weave talking. gravel into this. Oh, I love it, <laughs> love it. Um, but we've, we've said, we've applauded the UCI for restricts and stuff, but... Fairings are creeping in on UCI events. We've seen um, Remco of Enipol have an aero sort of what looks like a fairing down his um, skin suit. They're claiming it was like a race radio. But I don't know how people are like getting this past the UCI judges. What's happening? Well, because it's a radio, isn't it? But I feel like it's. I feel like the the radio isn't that shape if you look at the radio. Could you not just make a radio? I that feel shape? like they're now aero making radios. an aero radio. That's legit. But, Do you remember when, going back a few years, when riders wore camelbacks on the yeah, front? camel fronts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, like, but that was the thing, and then I'm pretty sure the UCI banned that, didn't they? Yeah, they did ban that. So hopefully, give it another year or so, and the race radio placement will now be restricted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's my take on it, basically. So basically, shock horror, the UCI rules are correct. Yeah. I, to be fair, I, yeah, I think that's a great conclusion to If I to had a hat to. on, I'd have to eat it. But I don't have a hat on, so yeah. It's a lucky escape. That's a lucky escape. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to know what you all think about this. Yeah, well, any good comments, we can pick them out and read them out next week as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Are we going to ask people what tech they would like to see banned, as well as, so, like, bicep fairings? I could actually do with bicep fairings. <laughs> yeah. Not because these biceps cause much in the way of aerodynamic turbulence, but just to make them look a bit bigger. Yeah. Please. All right, fair enough. Yeah. I'll just stick on my little arms. So yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's now time for hot and spicy tech, and we have some news of our own actually, because we've made some big changes and significant improvements to our own website, globalcyclingnetwork.com, where it's now bringing together everything that you love about cycling in one place. Yeah, let's be honest, the previous website didn't really do very much, did it? But no. this current one, like, I'm there two or three times a day, it is great. So, all of your latest news. There's a lot of a lot of tech stuff on there, isn't there? Um, because the Vuelta's on at the minute. There's oh, yeah. a load of racing stuff, but there's all sorts of other lifestyle bits. There was a super cool article I was reading about how bike riding in Richmond, Virginia, has been changing. Yeah, like kind of commutary wow. stuff. There's loads and loads of cool stuff. Not to mention the fact that um, the dedicated editorial team over there are going through um, like old GCN tech vid, so Down our, in the main, archive. our Maintenance Monday videos will be up there too, so you can actually like read about it as well. They can potentially correct anything that you've done wrong in the video. They're going to be at it for a while. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, so it's super cool, isn't it? It is really cool. So yeah, head over to globalcyclingnetwork.com, check it out, and well, also let us know your feedback, mm. because as you say, we've got a dedicated team working to make this like the, the home of cycling, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. it's worth saying as well, isn't it? Because it's not a given these days with bicycle websites. Um, it's free. To oh, yeah. yeah. That's like the most important thing. Yeah, it's that's free. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so it's free. Uh, apart from, of course, if you then want to watch GCN Plus stuff, and then obviously that's... But GCN I feel like that's, that's valid, isn't it? Oh, totally, that's fair, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, right, moving on to hot tech. BMC have just launched a brand new bike that they've yeah. spent... Apparently spent five years developing alongside Red Bull Advanced Technologies. So um, take a look at it, and we'll tell you some more about it. So BMC, perhaps unsurprisingly, given that they spent five years developing it, <laughs> yeah. are claiming that it is the fastest time trial slash triathlon bike in the world. We've not seen any data yet, have we? Not yet. But my quiet word, on that. it looks fast, even yeah. standing still. One thing that can't be refuted, though, is they've saved 500 grams over its predecessor, the Time Machine 01 disc. Yeah. Like... That's a lot of That's weight. a huge saving. Vast amount. There's all sorts of cool bits on there. My absolute favourite 
is the shark fin. Have you seen the shark fin? Only briefly this morning have I seen the shark oh, fin. Oh, my word. So the, so the fork, uh, the fork blades are really wide, so we've kind of seen that on a few bikes now, haven't yeah. we? But then underneath the fork crown, they've got the shark fin, which apparently <laughs> deflects dirty air away from your down tube. So goodness knows how fast Ollie Bridgewood would go on that bike. I mean, they'd have the police after him, if Basically, they could even yeah, keep up. Absolutely. All of those watts... <laughs> deflected around the down tube. Anyway, I think that's that's very cool. It is really cool, um, but it's not just about using Red Bull's extreme like aero technologies and sort of knowledge that they have, because it's also about using their expertise in taking rider or driver feedback and then translating that into something useful and sort of data-driven that can then be implemented by engineers and um, people developing the bike, which I'm, I think is interesting. I'm really intrigued by this, yeah, because I mean, it's a long time. Well, it's not that long ago since I rode a time for a bike. Like, they've got a lot better, haven't they, over yeah. the last decade? You've been flying around on that all day or all, dude. It's a good Destroying point, yeah. all of us. Yeah, <laughs> forget about that. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Um, but, it, but I'm interested because because often, you know, one of the limiting factors of time trial bikes, triathlon bikes, is, is the handling of them, particularly when yes. it's windy. So, so I'll be interested to know what they've actually done to make this bike yeah, I think respond that's, better. To I think that's the feedback. element where... Um, they're trying to say it's now the world's fastest time trial bike. They're trying to. I think the way they're putting it is is an overall package rather than just like in a straight line. That's what I think anyway. Um, but there's literally loads of really mega stuff to talk about here. So much so that I think we're going to have some dedicated videos all about it, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in a well, in a month or so, I think actually, yeah. So we'll be able to like dive a little bit deeper into the collaboration with Red Bull Advanced Technologies, find out exactly what's been going on, and um, and yeah, it's, it's super cool. Isn't I it? do have one little bit of bad news for people who are perhaps F1 fans out of me. Uh, no drag reduction system on this bike, unfortunately. Other than the shark fin. Yeah, I'm the shark fit. I was more thinking like the movable wing at the back, but you know, whatever. Um, anyway, I've got the prices. Price-wise, starting at 6,900. Is the rider not the drag reduction system? The uh, rider's pretty movable. It's like when you want to that, slow down for a actually, corner, you're that's, like, yeah. boo, and then when you want to go quicker, it's like, what? It's forward. in fact, perhaps, a more evolved DRS. Basically, yeah, far more intelligent. Far more intelligent. For well, some people, anyway. Some people, yeah. My, um, my <laughs> wife actually uh, always takes the mick out of me when I'm driving because I employ my cycling drag reduction system in the oh driver's seat. So uh, less nowadays, actually, but when back in the day when I used to have a really, really terrible car, did 0 to 60 in 24 seconds. Uh, to go faster, I'd lean forward to try and get more aero. And it was yeah. not a convertible, like it was a it was a Ford Escort. Do the anyway. kids think that was cool as well? Well, like I said, I've kind of grown out of it now. But like, <laughs> you know, as a, as a young 20-something, I'd be like, come on, go a bit yeah. quicker. Oh, I need to break for the corner now. This, this is incredible. Um, yeah. Anyway, as I was saying before we share that amazing bit of information, um, <laughs> prices start at 6,999 euros and go all the way up to 16,999 euros, wow. which is... Yeah, you're talking about a lot of money there. That's 16 times more expensive than my Ford Escort was. So. <laughs> but it's probably also fast. Yeah, I'd say arguably so, quicker. Uh, so, yeah. Um, now, less expensive, though, New Tech. Yes. New 105. That was yeah. a biggie, wasn't it, dropping last week? Yeah, so Ollie filmed a video about this, and I liked the fact that he started the video saying the groups that other people has returned, um, which I think is a fair statement. People were upset that 105 was currently only available in an electronic shifting version, but I think it's good that you now have got that mechanical option as well. Yeah, um, oh, and the mechanical yeah. option is mega as well, isn't it? Like, I mean, it, it, like mechanical shifting works so well. It is not DI2, but no. it's so smooth. It's I mean, so it fast. isn't trying to be DI2, is it? It is a separate thing, but as you say, it's now very smooth. Yeah, and the levers are absolutely mega. It's, there's not that much new stuff in this, is it? It's the shifters, and the brake levers, obviously, and yeah. then the derailers, but the rest of it is all compatible. Yeah, with it's actually kind of a similar bike. theme to the new GRX group set, which has launched, which I made a video about. So if you want to see that, head over and check that out. It's on, it's on the GCN channel. But basically, GRX had quite a few more updates. There's the RX. 820 group set, which has now gone 12 speed. There's the RX 610 group set, which has now also gone 12 speed. And they have a new set of wheels, the RX 880. I to check my knowledge there of those numbers. Interestingly, whereas 105 went DI2 before it went mechanical, there is currently no 12 speed DI2 GRX. Correct. Is there? No. So, uh, You'd think it would be in the pipeline, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But now I think it's really interesting. One, you know, going back to the 105 being the group set of the people, I did see a couple of comments about like, the recommended retail price for group set only was about the thousand pound euro dollar mark. Yeah, and people often get a little bit hot under the collar because that sounds like an awful lot of money for I mean, just it a group is set. Still, but but 
I think people get used to seeing group sets reduced on yeah. websites for like fifty percent off. So I think we're 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 already like double what we would expect to see a group set for, and that's not because the RRP yeah. is double; it's because no one's discounted it. That's actually a really good point. I never thought of that. Yeah. Well, that's so, the sort of insight you get when you join the tech show. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah thanks. It's not my first rodeo, <clears throat> this. It's not your first rodeo. Um, anyway, next time in Hot Tech, we have to announce the Zwift Academy dates that have yeah. now gone live. So registration opens from the 30th of October, and then everything kicks off from the 6th of November. I'm looking forward to Zwift Academy. Are you? I am, yeah, genuinely. Yeah. Super genuinely. I'm, I'm going to try and encourage some, uh, some people... Uh, to apply this year. I'd like to see what happens if Andrew Feather did yeah. this with the Academy. With his power numbers, they'd probably be like, no, I'm sorry, mate, like, you need to recalibrate. Yeah, they'd be like, no, I'd put him on a different trainer. This yeah, one must exactly. be faulty. Um, but imagine what would happen if they <clears throat> unleashed him. Yeah, well, if you're sat at home thinking, like, when you watch the telly and the pro race, you're like, God, these guys are doing it all wrong. I know far better. Well, if you're that person, apply. Prove That's everyone it. wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, also, for the rest of us who don't do that, but just want to get fit and have a bit of fun and do some training sessions yeah. and stuff, it's really cool, isn't it? It's like yeah. a mass participation thing. Yeah, I love it. Right, that's it. More hot tech next week. It's now time for comments of the week, which, would you believe it, is actually one of my favourite parts of this show. Mine too. Um, where we pick out the comments you've been leaving underneath our videos. Now, there was a bit of backlash last week, specifically aimed at me, because... Uh, well, it's just people aren't happy that I hated on the radar rear lights a little bit. Yeah, mm. yeah, there was. Uh, I found in the past that people really love radars. When you love a rear radar, you really love it. And um, so, yeah, all things sports, Mike McIntyre, for example, comes in. Highly disagree with the radar rear light. Even though ears work, the radar can pick up the car coming before it's close enough for me to hear it, especially on windy days when having a chat with friends, which I totally get, except what I don't know is what you do with the information that your radar's telling you. Yeah, there's a car coming and you, you see it fractionally before you hear it, but, but what do you do? But this is what I said last week, but people still aren't happy about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I think basically, if you feel like the technology helps you out and you feel more comf comfortable, comfortable and confident when you're riding with it, happy days. If you don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, well, that's it. Like, the tech is good. You might not like it, yeah. but it doesn't suck. But no, anyway, so there we go. Uh, one more comment from there was from Christian. They say about cable disc brakes, um, if set up with something like knock-on cables or Odyssey liner cables, they work pretty well. The biggest weakness is the system is the um, housings compressing. If you can set them up with compressionless housings, then they move a bit further up the spectrum. Because they also said cable disc brakes kind of perhaps suck a little bit. Yeah. I mean, they're hit and miss, aren't they? Like, that, I've had yeah. ones that work really well, yeah. and then other ones are that just, it's just well, really hard to stop them dragging. Apparently, according to Christian, it's your compressionless housings that you need. No, but it's also the caliper themselves, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's not, like, both sides don't retract. Yeah, yeah, it, that, I mean, that is the issue, yeah. That is the main issue, um, yeah. Underneath, bike you need versus bike you want, which we had out last weekend, Max says, I bought a Eurobike after watching many GCM videos. I hate it and was just about to give up on cycling until a friend of mine let me have a go on his specialised alley. I sold the Eurobike on Facebook for £100. Felt guilty passing that bike on, but bought myself a decent second-hand road bike for £500. Bought on 105. Well, I'm glad he's chosen a more suitable bike. That is super cool. There's things in this comment, though, that I don't understand. Firstly, why would you buy a Eurobike after watching the GCM videos? <laughs> We've never at any point said it was, like, a wise purchase. No. I don't think. No, I mean, like, yeah. it's a bicycle and therefore it's cool, but as far as bicycles go, it pretty much sucks. Mm. But then what I also can't understand is how you sold it for £100 <laughs> when you can buy it new on Amazon for 130 <laughs> Well, so you've, you, I'm not surprised you feel guilty. You basically <laughs> just ripped someone off. Um, anyway, there we go. Buster Keaton also says, if you need to buy top spec components, you probably don't need them. Agreed. It was what I said in the video. Um, I think it's a probably fair statement to live your life by. If you have to buy the really top spec stuff, you don't really need it. Doesn't mean you don't want it and it's useful. But you don't yeah, need no, it. I get what you mean. Like you don't need it. Need it? No. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's a bold statement, but... I mean, it is, yeah. Yeah, why not? Go big, yeah. mate. Go um, big. What have we got underneath Ollie's 18-minute vid? Uh, John Doron, uh, <laughs> 9615. Uh, the couple at 654 thinking, is that guy going to keep going with the boring oh, cycling Oh, right, we're, we're going to play the clip. Ollie was at the cafe, and then this the couple that was sat behind him just got up and walked off halfway through. <laughs> play the clip. Oh, uh, There we go. It's funny, you know, because... 
people do that in the office when Ollie's talking about bikes as well, don't they? Oh, you can't hate on Ollie when he's not here to defend his time, That's Colin. precisely when you can hate on Ollie. Well, all right. Uh, also, um, Rui says, if it's 10 miles, how come the average is 52 kilometres an hour? People are also upset about the mix of units being used. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, okay. Um, there you go, more comments next week, which means it's now time for the Bike Vault, Whoa. which is my actual official favourite part of the show. Where's all the begubbins? Got the bell here. Nice. Um, now, the Bike Vault, if you want to play along at home, you can use the GCN app, you can upload pictures of your bike, and then the bike community can judge them nice or super nice, and then um, we join in as well, don't we? We do, indeed. Of course, yeah. we have the casting vote. Absolutely. Uh, right then, first up, we've got this one sent in from Will Pierce. Oh, this is the most super nice first from last week on the app. This was number one in the app last week. Is that right? Yeah. That is a cool looking bike, the Factor Ostro, uh, with a jazzy backdrop. The thing that. is, some yachts. I like, I like the bike, I just feel like the crank's on low, it's in the wrong gear, and it's lent up against the railing. So for me, I don't think I can let that slide through as a super nice. Well, you know what, right? So it's been a while since I've been here, and I know rules are rules, <laughs> but I'm starting to disagree with Biggie Smalls. I actually think that bikes can look cooler when they're not in Biggie Smalls. What's your uh, suggestion then? Middle of the block. So I think that's probably a bit too far up the block, but I'm okay. thinking like middle of the block can look kind of cool. Okay, yeah, I can probably get on board with that. Yeah, so I feel like, you know, rules obviously kind of sometimes meant to be broken, I think. So um, you vote on this one, and you have the cast. Well, I agree. It's not super nice because mainly it's because nice. the back the backdrop's too messy because <laughs> it's too close, and you need a bit of separation. The okay. framing's all wrong. It's just a nice then from us. All right, blooming nice bike though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, first up this week, we've got Coltan underscore seventy three then with a custom framed titanium bike from two thousand nineteen. Let's have a little look at this. Nice polished silver frame. I like that. That is cool. Those Rolf wheels as well. Yeah. Is but, Rolf a blast from the past or is it still like current brand? I don't know. Oh, I feel like it might be one of those brands that got resurrected because yeah. they got bought by Trek, didn't they, years ago? Is that when it kind of turned into Bontrager? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so they sort of took that technology for it. Well, you know those wheels because you've got the paired spokes yeah. on them. Yeah, loving them. I can't wait to share that bike with everybody. Yeah. Um, no, this is a beautiful bike, but whilst I'm talking about no rules with uh, gear placement, it's got to be on the big ring. <laughs> yeah, we can't let that slide. It's, it's nice from me. Ring. Yeah. Um, talking about that bike, which um, oh, I haven't put it in the bike vault yet. I was going to sneak my own bike into the bike vault, but I forgot. <laughs> Never mind. On to the next one. <laughs> On to the next one. Uh, this one got sent in by uh, Atmo. Um, description, GK32s if I'm feeling dirty. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, don't know. Um, anyway, it's a Cervelo Soloist. I like Cervelo Soloist very much. Mm. That is cool. Um, it, I suppose you're kind of like, are you going for the gravel vibe by putting it in... Um, in the rockery? In the rockery, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I think that looks pretty cool, actually. I like it. It's, ups it's, it's upsetting me that it's propped up with a giant rock on the crank. Mm. You would not want to scuff your new Dura-Ace cranks up. That is pretty risky, isn't it? But, um, I, could, I think we can go super nice on that. Yeah. Super nice? Super nice. All right. Right, nice. next in, we have got... Um, oh, there it is. I did put it in the pipe vault. <laughs> I thought I'd put it in. <laughs> so we have a wonderful bike from me. Wow, nice. Which mate. I am going to upload into the bike vault, but because I made the rules around there, I've snuck it in. That is absolutely beautiful, mate. And, and it resonates with me because I had almost that exact bike. I think it's like 2006, isn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, uh, yeah I li literally like component for component, Bontrager, Race X Lite, Doodars. What's the seat? Um, so that's well, a, got a brown seat. Look, it's, it's a limited edition Cell Italia saddle. It's incredible. Oh well, yeah, but why is it brown? Um, well, because the limited edition one has got a suede cover on the top, and I just thought it might go real nice on this bike. I, I feel like you're not. I'm not loving it. Not no, loving I feel it. like then he's like black. Good. Yeah. White. Always cool because then you can swap out your bar tape for brown white. suede. <laughs> no. <laughs> like brown suede's fine if you want to go into town. You know, and, like go yeah. grab a coffee. I might ride it into town. Anyway, um, I mean, I like for loafers, oh, oh. Not, a, not, a, <coughs> not to sit I can't, on. I can't vote on my own bike, so you can decide on this. I'm really sorry, mate, but that saddle, it triggered me. I can't get past uh, it. Everything about that bike screams super nice, apart from the saddle. Oh, I'm absolutely heartbroken. I am. Yeah, you, just, like, you, couldn't, you couldn't race with a brown suede saddle. That bike screams Tour de France victories. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, okay. Can you, go, can you change it and re-upload it next week? 
No, because I, I specifically asked that saddle from Sell Italia because I loved it so much. <laughs> I was like, guys, can you stay with this saddle? I love it. <sighs> oh, mate, I'm Don't really worry. sorry. Oh, just that one. Dead my pride a little bit there. I had a white saddle on that bike. All right. So Sell just, Italia flight it was. Just to confirm, just a nice from you, was <laughs> it? Just a nice. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, mate, I'm sorry. I'll buy you a coffee after. Thanks. Oh, yeah. I feel really bad. Um, at my next, with a family ride out to the donut shop with a, where's well, the Fabrication SX. XC. Um, three bikes for the price of one here. There we go. Um, um, I like this. That's the second uh, bike vault submission in a week from Atmo. Oh. He's got his Cervelo soloist oh, yeah. in the rockery, <laughs> and then now he's got those three as well. Oh, I didn't even realise I'd managed to do that. Yeah, there we go. Well, I think I'm going to vote these super nice because they're kids' bikes, they look cool, they're a cool colour. They're a nice brown saddle on one of them as well. Brown saddle, you, that's it, you've won me over. I don't, I'm not interested in your opinion. Super nice from both of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely from me as well. I love a brand. Right, on to the last one. <laughs> on to the, the last, last one for this one. week. Uh, JSNS Graham uh, rebuilt my town bike with as many vintage components as I could get my hands on. Whoa, look at that. That's beautiful. That is very cool, isn't it? Really weird handlebars. <laughs> they are a bit weird, yeah. Super weird. I mean, like, they look great, but. Um, so, yeah. one thing that made this bike better, do you know what it is? <laughs> Brown saddle. Brown saddle. <laughs> no, because that would okay. be awful. Everything's okay. monochrome. Okay. Well, I really like it. I would like to like vote this as super nice, just yeah. for the retro cool factor. Yeah, Tony, and it doesn't even matter that it's not in the big ring because it's a town bike, right? Yeah, something like that. Right, that's it for this week's tech show. Sai, it's been mega having you join us for this week. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm slightly heartbroken about my bike and the I bike. Know, bowl, I was, what would you like? A hot chocolate? Flat white? <laughs> It's going to take something, mate, and a cake to sort this out. Okay, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, mate. <clears throat> right, anyway. I've got, a, I've got a black saddle if you want it. <laughs> I don't want it. Let us know in the comments section down below what bits of rules you think the UCI should add or take away, and um, well, we'll pick them out next week. Cool. See you later. I've got a white saddle if you want it. <laughs> no. Oh. Uh.